Ghostew.com. seconds go by, and I have no heat whatsoever. I start thinking, ah, maybe I got a dud. Maybe it's expired. Did I wait too long? And what the hell happened? And just when I thought that... Oh, God. I can't breathe. Somebody get me a goddamn glass of milk. Needless to say, this chip is hotter than a stick of fucking big red gum, that's for sure. It is the hottest thing I've ever had in my life. Now, thankfully, the heat only lasts for about 15 minutes or so. So once you hit that 15-minute mark, you're in the clear. Or so I thought. Because what I found out is that the heat doesn't go away. It just moves on down to your stomach. So now it feels like this goddamn chip is just hanging out down there, melting my insides with a hair dryer. Well, now how am I going to solve this conundrum? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I fucking ate an ice cream cone. Seemed like a good idea at the time. It seemed like that ice cream cone would go down there and start beating that chip's ass. And that seemed to be the case until my stomach was like... <laughs> yeah, apparently that ice cream cone wasn't beating the chip's ass. It was fucking playing patty cake with it instead. Now, all of a sudden, I get these stomach pains out of nowhere. And they are debilitating. I'm laying on the couch making my peace with God. Take me! Take me now! Pretty, pretty, please! Now, eventually, dinner time rolls around. And on this particular night, we were just so happy to have a big old pan of lasagna. Now, I know what you're thinking. He wouldn't eat lasagna on top of an ice cream cone, on top of a bunch of milk with a fucking devil chip inside of him. That wouldn't make any sense. Well, you're wrong, because I ate a big-ass fucking plate of it. And to my surprise, the stomach cramps go away. Oh, my God, it's over. I did it. But wait a minute, there's more. Uh, a lot more? So much more. Because at this point, the chip transfers over to my intestines, and my intestines were like, uh, no thank you, you can go fuck yourself with that, and promptly sends it right to my asshole. Now, I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of an on-fire butthole before, but let me tell you, it's not as fun as it sounds. For the next 45 minutes, my ass transforms into like a fucking malfunctioning flamethrower. And of course it's noisy as hell in there. There's no way I could be discreet at this point. Sounds like there's fucking 14 people taking a shit at once in there. Um, are you alright? Should I call the cops? The whole time I'm sitting there, all I can think about is, oh, that's why they put the chip in a coffin, because the coffin is for your asshole afterwards. Now I get it. So after a very unpleasant, very emotional trip to the bathroom, it's finally over. And I'm so pissed off at this point, I'm just like yelling a stream of obscenities at the toilet, taking all my anger out on it. Fuck you, you fucking punk ass tortilla chip! That's me! You see, back in my day, most sleepovers ended with all of us sprawled out in the living room, struggling to stay awake while we watched shitty infomercials on TV. Because that's all there was to watch after midnight. We'd just watch infomercial after infomercial until this bad boy came on the screen, and that was it. That was the end of TV time, according to the TV. But luckily for us, we grew up in what I considered to be the golden age of infomercials. We're talking about the classics here, like the George Foreman Grill. We drink every single drop of that bullshit. And you wouldn't believe me if I told you, but these fruit smoothies actually kinda tasted like fucking dog shit. They were nasty as hell. I'm talking second round of Fear Factor episode nasty. That shit was so chunky, David's ass had to eat his with a fucking fork. But we ingested it, and we ingested all of it. Well, imagine my surprise when about 45 minutes go by, and all of a sudden my stomach's like... 
Now, I don't know what it's like to be a menstruating woman, but I had cramps so bad that it felt like my insides really, really, really wanted to become my outsides. I don't know what kind of fucking E. coli salmonella bullshit I gave myself, but I was in some serious pain. But if I thought I had it bad, I look over at Michael, and his ass looks like he's about to blow his appendix out the ass end of his pants at any moment. And then I look over at David, and wouldn't you know, his ass is like smoking a cigarette, perfectly a-okay, thinking about going back in the kitchen for seconds and shit. Well, all of a sudden, Michael makes a mad dash towards the bathroom, holding his asshole as if it were a loaded weapon. Now, we don't know exactly what he did in the bathroom, but throughout the whole house, you could hear his ass going, Ow! Now, I don't know how David's mom didn't wake up when a bunch of children used her blender at 3 in the morning, but you bet your ass she woke up when she heard Michael's call of the wild ass, that's for sure.